Hey everybody, sorry I'm late. Uh, just got some uh, sad news uh, from uh, one of my uh, regular people that yeah um, let's just turn that off. Um, I uh, heard that Kate Howell, if you know Kate, she actually was uh, doing some moderating for me for a while and uh, she had her own channel and she did a lot of long live streams with, with her husband and he had uh, surgery a few days ago and um, passed away. I don't know the details, but I'm sorry to hear that. Kate's a great gal and if you recall, when I went out to Austin to visit my son, I actually met her and she took me to the, uh, the best, um, let's see, fried, fried catfish place, if you remember. <clears throat> Hi, John Kulsar. I hope I was saying that right. Um, I'm glad you missed uh, my videos. I really appreciate that. Let me quickly say hello to everyone. Daryl is here, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's funny, Daryl. Thank you. Um, Patricia, thank you for being here. Um, I missed you. Uh, let's see. Thunderstorm. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't see anything on the forecast here. Uh, Yes, I'm definitely stretching quite a bit, John, from my California place. <laughs> That's quite true. Uh, just trying to get this adjusted. Not too bad. I decided to turn the turn the uh, laptop around, and um, so it doesn't look too bad like this. Thank you, Judy. Judy is well, uh, wishing me a happy anniversary. And you know, I forgot to get my notes uh, there. I've got so many notes. Uh, but they're in the other room. But I have an idea. I'm just going to do a short live tonight and um, comment on, I want to know how many people have seen my 48-hour survival challenge and how many people are on board. Now, I was really surprised. Um, actually, Danny at Deep South Homestead loved Danny. He uh, He left a comment as well, and he was... He was thinking that there were a lot of people who were going to uh, not fare well in um, a power outage. So based on the um, comments that he saw. Hey, Tracy, um, I hope you leave a comment as well, because um, I have a feeling you and, and Mike will do fine in a power outage. You're very resourceful. And uh, let's see who else is here. Thank you. I Today is my one-year anniversary of being in this place. Uh, my first night slept here was December 1st. If you clicked, if you, if you saw my com community page post, I had five pictures. They allow you to have up, up to five pictures now on a community page post, and so you can click through and see. But all of those picture were, pictures were me arriving and the very next morning. So I hope you check it out. Leave a like and a comment. Let's see. Uh, so let me know who all is on board for the challenge. I was actually surprised in the comments that I haven't looked in the last three hours because I was cranking, trying to get my next video out uh, and didn't quite make it. <laughs> so... Uh, I haven't looked at the comments in the last three hours, but there were quite a few people that had had really hard experiences, either from storms, ice storm. I, I saw ice storm. Uh, let's see. Um, of course, the Northridge quake. I lived through that, but I, at the time, was in Hollywood, and um, it was it, it was scary uh, and services were cut off and things were closed, um, but it was nothing like really where it happened in Northridge, which, and that fault line runs right down through Santa Monica. So I wasn't out there yet. 
when that happened. And um, a lot of people were without power. But of course, you have you have very mild weather in California. And so not that many people are going to freeze to death, uh, which is something, a real consideration that seniors have. And, um, and I certainly want to address that uh, during this challenge, because if we have a blackout, it, Danny says it's not if, it's when. When we have a blackout, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, you, if you, uh, one of my uh, viewers is uh, on a feeding tube, uh, another one is on oxygen. Uh, both of those people have to have electricity. So the, you need to have your plan in place. So I want to hear from you now. I want to hear all your comments and suggestions about uh, what, if you're, first of all, if you're doing it or if you're just going to follow uh, the few of us doing it. And also if you've had any further thoughts, because there were some great comments and suggestions so far. And what I'm going to do is compile all those. And tomorrow I'm going to make uh, part two, the part two video and talk about what I'm going to do, some of the things that I'm going to do. And, uh, and that should be out, uh, before noon tomorrow. So you have that to look forward to. Uh, Emmanuel here is here from Ultimate Gardening. Hey, you don't think you could do it, do you, Emmanuel? I know it's warm where you are. I forget exactly where you are, but I don't think you have to worry too much about cold, but you do have a younger sister and you have a whole family. And, um, and are you going to try to do it? But because we all need to have a plan. For, for when this happens, because we just have to pretty much assume it's going to. We've all been hearing for one year or more about, I mean, many people who talk about this sort of thing. I, I, I've i basically stayed out of it because so many other people do all this, you know, like Ice Age Farmer, uh, Danny, um, so many people are so much more knowledgeable than me, but I do keep myself informed and I'm hoping you do too. And so um, we, uh, it's it's going to happen if you look at uh, the the food shortages and the and the the uh, weather um, uh, events. Sorry, couldn't think of the word events all over the world. Uh, you know, and some people say it's biblical. So if if that's where you know what you believe, then you know we are in for a power outage, and we need to be prepared. We need to have a plan. And um, I'm just encouraging everyone who can to try to do the challenge with me so that you know whether or not you're ready. This is just a test. There's no like failing or succeeding. We're, we're seeing where we are at and what we need to improve on when it does happen. All right, let's see who else is here. Um, Sheree is here, Deanna, uh, Gina, Anne, Debbie, Kelly from Mississippi. Uh, let's see. Um, Leanne, I hope I'm saying that right, uh, from Idaho. And um, <laughs> well, thank you, uh, John. I do try. Cool, sir. Uh, Denny Holmquist, new to the channel, inspiring. Uh, are you Denny? I can't quite see your uh, picture that well. Um, uh, but thank you so much for joining. And I hope you're going to be on board with this. I'm going to catch up with the comments and find out exactly who is on board. Uh, I heard from Jackie and uh, in Connecticut, and she's been through this. She sounds like she is very well experienced and prepared. So good for you, Jackie. Bravo. Brava. Debbie Marshall, uh, Portland, Oregon. It could be cold there. Uh, it could be very cold there. It could get very cold there, and, a, and you could absolutely could have something go down with your power. I'm in um, 7 or 7A. Some people say one, some people say the other, John, but um, let's just say 7A. Coco is here. Happy holidays, and it's also my one-year anniversary, Coco. I don't know if you missed that. Uh, let's see. I know, Emmanuel. Thank you for looking back at my old videos. In fact, remember Hazel? 
Everybody remember Hazel from my neighborhood who I put in the English tea. She had stories of growing up in post-war London and she made her, her infamous scones and we had tea and she told stories, tales from post-war London. I heard from her today and another neighbor and the house that I lived in is for sale. It has been for sale. I think it's still for sale <laughs> by this, the same sale. And so they're not keeping it up the way I did. Although I did hear that the guavas did produce. Ah, they missed the rain in the forecast. Okay. Um, I would just like to, uh, you know, send a big um, heartfelt um, rest in peace to um, Kate Howells. Kate, her husband, passed away, and um, she's a really great gal, and um, I know he had health problems, and I'm really sorry. So I want to just say that. And Rose is here. Thank you so much, Rose. Uh, you guys, if you're looking for soaps, homemade soaps for the holidays, holiday gifts, uh, go to Ramblin' Rose Cottage and pick some up and help support her channel. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Bye. <laughs> Hello and bye. Oh, I'm glad you're feeling better, Cherie. Lynn Gatlin generators, and there's all kinds. Now, I heard from. Um, Jothan at Echo Echocentric Homestead, and he was thinking that uh, we should have no generators as part of the rules, just to see. What do you guys think about that? Should we try that on the first round, or save that for the second round, or or what? See how we could do with no generators. Obviously, we're going to do. Uh, what we need to do to stay warm, you know, especially seniors. We don't want seniors to get too cold. We want to have uh, to make sure that everyone, if seniors can't have no way to to keep warm, you know, by wood stove, wood wood fire, uh, people living with them to 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 do this, then they need to have people that they can go to and rely on. Like when I was in in Asheville, my son and wife had already met a number of people in the neighborhood uh, that had whole house generators, which they don't have. They just have the one I bought them for their wedding gift, which, you know, you have to feed it with gas or propane. And, uh, and you know, it doesn't last, you know, for days on end either. So um, you need to know who, who your buddy is, who is going to be your backup, your first backup, your second backup. You need two or three backups especially when you're a senior and you cannot provide these things for yourself. Uh, so, and I was talking about you, Mrs. B. Uh, she's on a feeding tube. That's fantastic. That's one thing I haven't done is purchase. Um, she says she's purchased 25 year shelf life food for the family. I haven't actually done that. Um, you do need a plan, Mrs. B. And um, so talk to your family members, figure something out. Uh, you need you need a pump that that's you can run by propane. You need something. I mean, I am not asking anyone who is on life support systems to try to do this on Saturday. I am simply asking everybody to think about what you are going to do when it does happen. Anybody that can give it a try, great. Now, I have learned that where I, it's not going to be cold on Saturday night, so I'm kind of cheating. I feel a little guilty about that. Uh, but um, this won't be the only time we'll do this. But it's going to be something like the low is going to be 46 on Saturday night. So I really don't have to um, worry too much. Um, Pat, Patricia, are you going to do, um, are you going to do it with us? I forget. 
I know uh, they, she heats her whole house with her wood stove and she keeps that going. Okay, so um, Debbie is, is cares for people. I, I'm not sure if you're in your own home caring for someone, but she's licensed by the state to be a caregiver. She is not allowed to turn off the heat. You want a generator. You do have a fireplace. That's good. Do you have an insert? Do you have a, is it a radiant heater fireplace? What is your plan for power outage, especially if you're caring for people? Um, Judy is saying that she, they, prior to Hurricane Ida, you purchased a hand pump for your water well, otherwise you wouldn't have had water. And Judy, did you need the hand pump when you did Hurricane Ida cause a lot of damage? Oh, that's fantastic, Emmanuel. Um, he's thanking me for helping him get his channel off the ground. Yes, you've got to have battery backup, some kind, solar, something, you know. Um, but I mean, in the in the event of a real power outage, that that battery source, Mrs. B, has to be be able to go for seven days or so. So I would think that you would need some kind of a solar backup. Does anybody, by the way, does anybody have a great recommendation for a solar uh, backup battery? Because I haven't gotten one and I feel like I should have one here. Uh, let's see, S. Tay, Susan in Illinois. Oh my gosh, everybody say hello to Susan from Shorewood, Illinois. And longtime follower, but first time on a live chat. I'm so glad you're here, Susan. Thank, thank you. God bless you. Um, thank you, Debbie. Uh, let's see. Um, and Susan is here from the Central Mountains in Arizona. Arizona, still very much on my mind. Krista is here from Australia, which is even more on my mind. Two generators. Yeah, so um, how does everybody feel about, are, are we going to use our generator? Because the one thing, um, I think it was Jackie Boxer was saying that she had a solar backup for her refrigerator freezer. So um, if you have, um, have the name of a product that you recommend, Jackie, please leave it. <laughs> preferably underneath the video so it's easy to find. Uh, but if you, I don't want you to forget and not do it. So it'd be better to put it in the live chat than not. But I have looked at those ads so many times of the, you know, that, that you see all those ads on Instagram and Facebook and you constantly on YouTube and um, uh, for the solar generators. And I just don't know, uh, they might just be junk. Some people say they're just junk. I don't know. Liesl Riley from Southern California. Welcome. Are you new here? And Denny is in Southeastern Pennsylvania. Tracy was just here and she, I think she's in Southeastern Pennsylvania. She has a family farm, but she, uh, she goes to church. Um, Yes. Does anybody have any thoughts about the champion generators? Gail is asking. I don't know. I have, I have no uh, clue. So um, if anybody does, please leave a comment. Yes. Todd is here. Um, Central Texas. I'm assuming you're talking about the, the ordeal. Yeah, I know you are because my son left Austin in March and they went through it. 
And they were luckily like halfway between the airport and a hospital. So he felt like the power would probably stay on in their area. And it, it did for, I think it did for the most part, the water went way down, um, you know, and of course, uh, the, the, so many issues. It was, um, and people did die. Absolutely. You can, you can die in a night if it's too cold. Uh, so this is why we're not doing anything dangerous here. All we're doing is preparing for th this to happen because it's, it's going to happen. I mean, it happened, it happened in, in, uh, in, uh, central Texas this past February. And there's still a lot of discussion as to why that happened. I'm still not clear on that, but, um, anyway, uh, it, it th the bottom line is people died and that was, that was terrible. So, um, many people are not prepared for something like this to happen. And I was, I just want to do my little part to help you get there. Uh, let's see. Okay. Kelly is here and she had it. Uh, Kelly. Um, okay. She's got some kind of, now I've already forgotten, uh, some kind of black mold or something on her, um, crepe myrtle. Um, does, can anybody help her out? Uh, let's see. I've got a picture here. Ooh. It looks almost like white stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you these pictures real quick. Um, has anybody seen that before on crepe myrtle? It just looks like almost like white gunk. And I, I can't tell if that's reflecting. I'm trying to put it at an angle so it doesn't reflect. Mm, that's, I think this is the best photo to show them. Okay, does anybody have any suggestions for Kelly? She would greatly appreciate it. Uh, maybe Edwin knows, he's very knowledgeable. You, Lynn says you've got, um, yeah, when God speaks, I listen to, you've got electric gas wood. What does that mean? You've got electric comma gas comma wood comma. Um, uh, Coco, uh, I saw that she posted something about permaculture on, um, I think it was Facebook. I'm not sure if it was Facebook or YouTube, um, but I haven't heard from her personally, and she hasn't been on the uh, the live, so I don't I don't know what's going on. If anything, she may just be busy. Nana is here, but she's going to bed. Uh, she's in England. Let's see where were we? I'm quite behind, so let's see. Let me see if I can catch up real quick. Hello to Edwin and um, Nana. Thank you so much for my happy anniversary wishes. Yes, Coco, please do. I know that she does have a health condition um, because she actually had a video on that on her channel a few months ago. And so it just may be that. Oh, she got hurt once before. Absolutely, Rose. Electricity is sketchy here on 7B in 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 7B uh, zone, but you're up in the, in, in the mountains of, in Arizona, right? Propane heat, propane heat and generator along with full solar. Oh, that's good. 
Um, how did how, you're going to, she's thinking, Susan's thinking of changing her fireplace out to pellets. And when I was looking for a house, uh, the second house I put an offer on had a pellet stove. And I just remember somebody saying something negative about that. Does anybody have a uh, Daryl? Are you there? Do you, maybe it was you. Uh, can you give Susan any advice about, she's not asking for it, but maybe, maybe, maybe you have some ad advice you want to share with her about that. Mary is here from Upper Michigan. Finally, just got a generator. Where, where do we stand on generators, everybody? Right, right. Most likely, the most people that will be impacted will be people in the big cities, obviously, because they don't have access to firewood and, um, and you know, you're, I mean, I've I've lived I lived in a in a ten story building in New York. I know what it's like to be at the mercy of the whoever turns the heat on or doesn't turn the heat on. Um, the great thing I just want to remind everybody is once you go to bed, you can get you can get reasonably warm, especially if you have a uh, you know a good sleeping bag that can take you down. You get under the blankets, especially if you're living with someone, you, you know, you, the body heat, even an animal, you can cuddle up with your dog and, and, and share the body heat and get warm. It's when you're not in bed that, um, you know, if you're just sitting around and you're not covered up, that's when you're at more at risk. And when you've got to keep kind of the, uh, some kind of heat up. I mean, many people were saying when it happened to them, they put blankets on the doors, they shut everything down. They, they stayed in one room, kept the heat up in one room and, and did it that way. That's very smart. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Um, well, maybe I would, maybe I would, I don't know. I mean, I lived in, I lived in Southern California for 32 years. And so, uh, you know, the only time I was cold in all of that time is when I, you know, went, went, uh, skiing or something. So, uh, that's, one of the main reasons I want to do it for myself to see. Now I gave myself a mini test today. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be on for a few more minutes here. Uh, I gave myself a mini test and I said, okay, I'm going to turn the heater off, turn the heat off. For some reason, the, the motor still comes on and it's still blowing out cool air, even though I've got the system off. It's not on cool. It's not on heat. It's off and still it's blowing air. So maybe it circulates air. I don't know why it even comes on, but it's doing that. But at least I turned the heat off on the lower floor and the, um, the second floor, you know, heat from here goes up. So, um, I set the thermostat for 62 upstairs. And so, uh, I don't expect that that unit ever even came on today because it was like in this, I think it was 60 or something today. Uh, no, no, no. That's going to be on Saturday. Sorry. Um, let me see what it was today. Um, I know I'm behind on comments. Yeah. Well, yeah, the high today was 64. So, I mean, you know, it, it, the, the heater was completely, there was, there was no heat going into the garage and it was like, I think it was, it was probably a little warmer and the door was open. It's probably a little warmer outside than it was in the garage. Uh, I think it was about close to 60, close to 60, 58 degrees in the garage. Cats, cats, the cats have their winter coat. It's very thick and furry and, and they're fine. Uh, I don't have to worry too much, but I do want to be prepared because we are going to get those really cold nights. That's why I want to do this. Um, and yes, if it's blackouts, uh, they'll be rolling. We won't know where or when or who or what city or, or where. Oh, there's Echocentric. Um, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Mm. Well, I hope you get that <clears throat> generator soon, Judy. Very soon. Because this is it. We know it's, we are, it's the dark, cold winter is upon us. Uh, 
Hey, Scott is here. I hope you're still here. Uh, <laughs> Scott is just so active and prolific on his channel. I just, I can't even keep track of all the videos. I've been putting out a lot of videos too, um, but not so much educational, but just um, more like, uh, you know, here's how I'm, I'm doing this thing at my age. And, um, I want to set a, a good example for other people that are older. And, uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Let's see. Um, Abama Gardner is here. I saw him on the, uh, or she, uh, I forget on the, um, it's a, she, I think on Danny's live the other day. I have a barbecue also, and I'm going to discuss tomorrow. I'm going to go through um, food and how we're going to keep our food cold and uh, how we're going, uh, the, some of the things I'm going to do uh, in terms of food on the weekend. Now, let's see. Well, that's good news, Gina. Gina says that um, people with special needs are first on the list for repairs. I would think it would be the elite. <laughs> and after that, the special needs people. But I'm being cynical. Sorry. Uh, let's see. You need an insert. Yes, everybody needs an insert, except I wish I had a radiant heater. Last year, Daryl, actually, our friend Daryl um, brought his out or changed it. No, I think he completely changed it and got a radiant heater and built his um, hearth out into the room. And so now his stove sits out into the room and it is toasty. It works so well. Okay, Jackery portable backup battery that can take a solar panel. And do you like that, Scott? I'm going to look into that. Do you recommend it? Have you put it to the test? Generac is the most prolific power unit. Well, it is here too. Um, but my understanding is it's three months before you can get, get one installed. Um, so you need something for it this winter. And by the way, John, are you doing the uh, challenge on Saturday? Who is with me? Pamela is here. She is from Missouri. Pamela, are you going to do this thing on Saturday with me? I've got these stink bugs everywhere. They're driving me crazy. Last night, I must have killed 17 of them. So that's good. You took water. Judy took, she had a power outage and she took water. At, she did, had a hat. She had a hand pump for the well. This is something if you're working off of a well at where you are, you need, you need a hand pump. And I wanted to get a hand pump for my cistern, but we put in a gravity fed line down in the yard. And I, I mean, it's not so convenient, but I could drive the four wheeler down, put the big, container of water, which only has about five gallons in it right now, put it on there and go down there and fill it up and bring it back up. The problem with that is then that until I use that water, that 240 pounds sits on those back two tires of that four wheeler. And I'm thinking that's a 20 year old machine and that's not good for the tires. So I don't know if the tires have been changed actually in those 20 years. Uh, battery lights in every room of the house. How are they installed? Gina says her husband recently installed battery lights in every room of the house. How are they installed? Um, are, um, how are they, do they go in the regular fixture? Do they go into a sock and with, how do they work? Okay. Thanks, Emmanuel. Yeah, we'll be talking about water in a, a separate um, in a separate exercise. Um, motion activated. 
that's wonderful. Can he come over here and do that for me, Gina? <laughs> uh, I want a solar backup battery, but Jackery is the one that Scott said he had. And I, I'm, I'm waiting to see if there's a comment where he, he thinks it's really good. Pamela has Jackery. Yeah, Cherie, you better uh, talk to a neighbor or something and see how somebody could help you get that hooked up. I sure don't know. So Susan has a well, a deep well, and she uses a solar powered pump uh, rather than a hand pump. Oh my gosh, that is such a great question. Devils is asking, if no power, will the sewer system work? Well, it's gravity fed. Um, or will it back up into your house? I, I mean, it's gravity fed. There's, I don't think there's any pump or anything. But this is the first time I've had a sewer, a septic system. So if anybody knows the answer to that, please leave a comment now. And Susie is retiring tomorrow. Fantastic. Well, congratulations. Susie's in Alabama, right? Uh Okay, Scott says, if you have no lift or pump stations along the sewer line as it goes to the treatment plant, meaning field, the septic field. Oh, you're talking about the sewer. I'm on septic, sorry. Yeah, Scott lives in, in city, so you're talking about the sewer. Um, for when you septic sewer, it just like, I see one word and I just think septic. So I'm sorry. I have septic systems so, oh, and I'm up on a hill. So it goes down hill. So hopefully, hopefully it's, I'm good there. Gail is looking for something, a generator, I think. Yes, yes, uh, Scott. I remember um, that w that was just within the last twelve months, right, Scott? That you had the the uh, I actually didn't remember it was a freeze. I was thinking it was a horrible storm. Um, are there any other preps that you want to recommend uh, that we get? Kevin is here from um, Florida uh, or Georgia. Uh, Kevin at Big Wave Floss says he really does not buy into the new backup batteries. Lots of small battery, what, they have lots of small batteries in them? Is that what you're saying? Or food, water, and heat are the most important. Hey, Be Well Farm. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to get, let's see. Um, You know, uh, Kevin, I have an emergency radio and I have not taken it out of the box. I need somebody to <laughs> talk me through that. Um, I, I need to check that. I was having a conversation about this sort of thing with my neighbor, the only neighbor that, you know, he's, he's, I, there are closer neighbors, but he's the one that I know. And um, I was actually at the gun shop and the guys were saying to me, um, they had, you know, they were, had been uh, learning all about this or watching something or listening to somebody or, or taking a class. I can't remember the circumstances, but they were saying that I should go to the um, 
boat supply store and get a foghorn or, or the boat horn, you know, the one that goes, whoa, you know, <laughs> like that and uh, get it and then let him know that I have that for um, emergencies. And so, um, because, you know, now we text each other, but I mean, that's not going to work. Uh, I mean, it'll work for a little while. I have a, uh, I have a solar power, I have a power cell to, to uh, plug in my cell phone, which will last for, um, uh, well, I probably could charge it a couple of times. Um, but the emergency radio, I need to get batteries in that and to figure out how it works. Um, uh, Echocentric, are you referring to uh, your country or you, you turn, or you, what? Um, uh, let's see, hang on. I am way behind. I'm going to just read comments. I'm not going to respond to everybody. I just can't. Wow. I am so sorry, Judy. Um, I was yakking on and... Uh, So, um, okay. Um, we had some, um, unwanted, um, attention on our live chat. Um, ZE says, Oh, the pellet stove required electricity. That's very good to know. I forgot who was talking about a pellet stove, but you don't want that. The CE will need a geodome inside the home to keep warm. Um, Linda's here from the AZ Desert. Thank you, Judy. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, one thing, I, I've got plenty of wood, but I don't have plenty of uh, kindling. And I really have to work on that. I have to find my little axe and get my little self outside and start chopping off some bark off of this wood. Thank you, Scott. Oh, uh, Mr. Tom is here. I actually gave you a shout out in, in the first draft of my video yesterday, but <laughs> upon reconsideration, it was way too long and I thought it needed to be shorter. And you, your, your comment hit the cutting room floor. I'm sorry about that. Um, 75 degrees. So you probably won't have to worry too much on Saturday. If you want to participate though, it'd be, it would be a good exercise for you. Um, Thank you, Susan. Much appreciated. I've got a great video in the morning. It's my uh, winter squash harvest. Now, I was talking to Doug today because <laughs> people don't care about winter squash. I'm going, yes, they do. Winter squash is so wonderful. It's so wonderful to grow. They're so beautiful. There's such variety. Uh, I, th I think winter squash are just fantastic. So my video in the morning that you'll see is about um, my winter squash haul and where I'm storing it. Uh, that's good, Linda. But if you have a power outage, you still have to be prepared. Let's see. Marita, are you new here? I don't recognize your name. We have 94 people. Thank you so much for joining uh, the live chat. Uh, everybody, I appreciate you tuning in. If you could just hit that like button. 
Uh, click off the live chat if you're on mobile and hit that uh, thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm um, just going to try to get through uh, some more of these questions and then I'm going to sign off. Um, but follow the new series. The new series is um, 24 Hour Survival Challenge. This is going to take place from sun up on Saturday to sun up on Sunday. And we're just going without power on this first one, which means your heat. Um, so uh, the jury is still out as to whether we're going to make it a rule that you can't use generators. Uh, Jothan, uh, I, I keep asking and, and people haven't said what they, what they want to do. Uh, Marita says, I have a small wood burner in the basement, a gas fireplace upstairs. Gas fireplaces don't put out much heat. Um, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't heat your house with, with gas fireplace. I used to have one. Um, how is a sump pump going? If there's an outage, you keep my small freezer going. I see. Okay. <laughs> That's true. ZE is true. Uh, yes, yeah, Susan, I have a solar oven. Um, I've never used it. It's still in the box. Um, it won't get used on Saturday. Well, I take that back. Might be a good time to use it for the first time. I would have to figure out something to make in it. I've never used it. Uh, Dana is here from Win Win Winfield, Kansas. Yes, I want everybody to say hello, I, especially if you haven't commented before, because Patricia keeps track of all the states and all the countries, especially if you're in another country, you know, uh, our, our world is in such turmoil. It's very exciting when I have people tuning in from other countries um, to the live stream. We like to hear what's going on there. Let's see. Um, yeah, ZE, so true. Right, Coco. Yeah, you don't have a whole lot to worry about, Judy, uh, with those temperatures, but uh, you still need to assess where you're going to be at if the power is out. Yes, <laughs> yes, Debbie, they don't want anybody burning a wood fire in California. Um, when they built all the new houses around our house, they, they, they did not allow wood to be burned. Todd, that sounds great, but you need to get on that. I heard that, I, I saw an article the other day that uh, Todd is saying that he was thinking of getting, getting a small wood stove for uh, the smallest bedroom, and that's great, but, I mean, you know, you got to poke a hole in the wall or the ceiling or something, and, and I also saw an article that, because um, I sent it to my son, and it was talking about wood stoves just being in really short supply. So uh, get on that. Where? What happened to Daryl? I haven't heard from Daryl in a while. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, Scott says, Jackery is just for small things like electronics and maybe a small fridge, which... Mm, Well, I don't have uh, a small fridge. I have an apartment size fridge with a freezer and I have a feeling that's not considered a small fridge. Uh, oh, oh, Scott left. Uh, I'm glad he stopped by. Let's see. No, I don't see, but maybe somebody else does here. Anybody know how to uh, make a generator from copper mercury? Um, a rod, iron, and water, like in the 1700s. I have no idea. <sighs> Linda's talking about her experiences with tropical storms and hurricanes. Well, Susan, if it's 30 degrees outside, what is it? What is the temperature in your house? Uh, 
Uh, Patricia is saying that we need lamps that use kerosene or lamp oil. Yeah, I had one of those for the entire time I was in my house in California. It did not, I don't, have not seen it here. I don't believe it made it here. And I'm sad about that because I'd had it for a long time. Unless it's upstairs, but I don't think it would be upstairs. That's not good. Ah, sheetrock screws. Okay. Gina's husband uh, installed battery powered lights in every room that attached to the wall with sheetrock screws. That's a great idea. If anybody wants to jump on that and get some of those put up. Wow. Okay. You're saying you ran your, your your seven cubic foot freezer. I think that one is an 11, I think. It's either nine or 11. And the Jackery uh, kept the freezer, the food frozen in her freezer. Oh, 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 it's a seven cubic foot freezer. Got it. Um, no sun for three days, and it's it, so it had enough juice to keep you going for three days. That's good. First day of summer here in Australia. Congratulations. We all need a little good news, right? <laughs> Gina, I'm laughing. I heard, I I got your I saw your comment. Uh, Jackery nine hundred. And um, Yeti, any uh, ideas on how big the Yeti should be? Battery powered camping lights, Paul says. I think that's maybe what I have. They're very bright. I used those when I first came here and they, you know, they, uh, the batteries lasted a long time. I haven't heard of Onan Generator. Bluette. Well, wait, uh, the Bluette, we're still talking about solar, right? I don't need another, um, you know, gas or, or propane. Sewer will not work. Wow, I'm behind on, on questions. I saw those lights on an ad. Gail is talking about the light bulbs that charge when you turn the power on. And then when the power goes out, the bulbs come on. I, 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 I think I should get some of those. I mean, that really makes things simple, doesn't it? Um. Uh, what are the, what are they called? Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Let's see. Okay, Marita has the Jackery 1000 and 1500 solar station. Uh, when you add the word station to it, suddenly it sounds like it's a lot more money. Just need water for septic to work. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Linda. I hope somebody answered your question, Dana, is asking about putting in a hand pump. pump. Is it expensive?
Yes, everybody, we, you do need stored water to flush the toilet. Um, so did anybody get a chance to answer Dana's question? Let's see. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure why you put. Um... Okay, Be Well Farm says uh, contact your utility companies. They will set you up for phone calls or texts to keep you updated on the progress of restoring power. Helps give you an idea of how long you could be without power. And I do have an app for for my utility company on my phone. I have never used it, so I don't know if I know how, but um, thank you, Maria. Maria's congratulating me. So is Sheila. Thank you so much. That's right. The, the cell phone's only gonna work as long as the tower has power. So it doesn't matter if it's charged. Okay, Todd is saying, um, th these are all really great suggestions. Um, we're not really going to deal with that on Saturday, but these are great things to know. If there's, if you don't, if you don't have a sewer, make sure you have a five gallon bucket, a few bags of sawdust as a makeshift composting toilet. You probably all re uh, already saw that. Um, I'm way behind. Um, Daryl says a hand pump is a, for on a well is a must. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that people that ask specific questions are actually glued to the chat to see that you have been answered. Hey, Denise. Yes, you can charge your cell phone in the car. That's true. Right. Uh, Kevin at Big Wave Florida says, Fla says um, make sure that you have an over the air emergency radio, which I guess, you know, it just runs on batteries. And so those batteries have to be charged somehow. Yeah, I bet a rocket so would be a great heat source. I don't know too much about that. Uh, Linda, I have a whole bunch of them over there and I need to get them over here. And um, today I was running out of Kenley. So I, what I was saying before is I ran a pretest here. I turned off my heater and I, and I start, and this is how I'm going to do it on, on uh, Saturday is um, I'm going to turn off my power and, um, and I'm going to, well, let's see, first I'm going to get the fire started. <laughs> it's not going to be that cold though. So, but I'm going to do it anyway, because it's good practice. I'm going to get the fire started and then I'm going to cut the power at sunup. And, um, but so today what I did is the same thing. I didn't cut the power. I just turned the heat off and it stayed between 67 and 69 degrees in the hallway where the thermostat is all day. It got up to 70 at one point and I've had the fire going all a day and I'm going to keep it going all night. Uh, Yes, it's always great to keep your gas tanks filled. Every time I go out, every time it's down a quarter. I mean, I never did this, never. For all the years I was in California, I would get down to the last gallon. I was never prepared. 
but at, now I am. So when I go out, even if I just drop it down like a quarter of a tank, I stop and I, I fill it back up again. ATM and gas pumps will not work in a power outage. Uh, why did you time out um, Be Well Farm, um, John? I don't understand. Oh, let's see. Um, yes, isn't winter squash wonderful? I hope you tune in tomorrow and see my, my uh, video. Punking vines. That's wonderful. Where are you, CE? Are you in California? Yes, Linda is saying have cash on hand as credit cards are not accepted during many disasters or nor will you be able to get cash out of the out of the um, uh, ATM. I just said that. Um, and big lines, you want to have you want to avoid all of that time wasting uh, of going and trying to get stuff. Um, people stand in lines for hours and hours. You don't, you want to avoid that. That's why you want to get prepared. Uh, that's fantastic, Marita. Thank you so much for joining the chat. I appreciate it. Uh, I know, right? Jothan is talking about how winter squash is so great. I mean, it's butternut. You can literally bake it, not put salt, pepper, butter, nothing on it and you taste it and it's delicious. Uh, as you're going to see in my video tomorrow, let's see the quick. Mmm, Quebec freezing rainstorm. Yeah. Right. Linda. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, uh, Am I going to be talking about that tomorrow? I'm not sure. Stay tuned to this, this series, everybody. I'm going to be uploading every day leading up to and through the um, through Saturday. And then Sunday, I'm getting something that I've ordered, and I'm going to do a video about that as well. So you've baked bread in the solar oven, the sun oven. Okay. I mean, I know it takes a lot longer. Does it affect the way bread rises? I mean, I could I could do that on Saturday for sure. I could just um, well, I could bake a I could actually bake a winter squash, and then turn around and bake bread out of the winter squash or muffins, either one. Remember when we did muffins in uh, Jack Davis's solar oven in in Phoenix when I traveled across the country? She did that. Marilyn is here from Hamilton, Ontario. Fantastic. Thank you for joining. Wow. Um, Daryl is saying, um, yeah, I don't know why you couldn't as long as it's well insulated, you know, the, uh, the way you're supposed to do it. I don't know why you couldn't have. Uh, I mean, they put, just think about the, the shack my mother grew up in. <laughs> I bet your manufactured home is a lot safer than the shack my mother grew up in. And they had a wood stove. Um, a tent. A tent. You mean to, you would set up a, no, how would you set up a tent in your house? Hmm. Yes, because a basement, although it's chilly, it, it never gets below like the temperature of the ground, right? Which would be like 50 something degrees. Um, yes, Pamela, you must get, get on that tomorrow, whatever it takes. <laughs> Susan, is that you saying your husband went out to chop wood, chop wood?
I'm trying so fast. There's, there's, they're like whole paragraphs to read. And I'm, uh, if you could just keep like one sentence, I could get down through the comments faster. Uh, well, ZE, I just had the whole house generator put in and it was that much. Um, but um, I just need to know how to keep the food cold for, you know, 24 hours right now. <laughs> I mean, you know, if if the whole grid goes down, that that would be water, natural gas and power are the hour my whole house generator wouldn't work i have i have uh, there's a refrigerator in the shop i'm not going to worry about it this just just got some drinks in there um probably just turn that well it would just be turned off i don't have anything in the freezer in there it's nothing to spoil so not worrying about that one but i've got food in my little apartment refrigerator freezer and my full size upright freezer and this is full too. So uh, that's my biggest concern at this point, especially for Saturday, because it's not gonna be that cold here. I mean, a sweatshirt is all in, I don't even need to have a fire going really. Now, a rocket stove for cooking, you've got to use it outside, right? You can't do that in the house, right? I, I've, I've never used one, so I've never even really seen one. Good night, Cherie. Let's see. Leslie Shivel. Uh, welcome. Uh, that's the first time I've seen you in the chat tonight. Let's see. Blue at Blue Eddie 240. Wow. Well, now, is that, how do you power that? Oh, that's solar generator. Sorry. Um, Blue Eddy. I want to just check that out. Now, if this is something that's installed on your house, then that I wouldn't be able to do that at all. Linda has got a great tip. Here's a tip. Some larger truck stops have disaster supplies that are out in big box and grocery stores that are out. They have some disaster supplies that are out in the big box stores and grocery stores during the hurricanes or other disasters. That's good to know. I know. I'm going to get a kerosene lamp. That's all there is to it. My mother used that to do all of her schoolwork. Um, wow, I'm not going to get through all this. Uh, I'm jumping down to the bottom because I am I was going to stand for 30 minutes and it's already been over an hour. Uh, let's see. Carolyn is here cooking for hungry, te hungry teens. Interesting conversation tonight. Thank you for so much for joining. Um, rocket stove used outside. Um, if you're asking me, Susan, uh, how big is my propane tank? I only have the, I think I have, three, let's see, I think I have three of the 20 gallon. Is that what they're, the ones that are like that? Uh, Linda had to go. Oh, uh-huh. Any crawler away while sleeping. You mean in your house? Linda says, keep a good number of emergency supplies in your vehicle. Well, <coughs> I have, <coughs> sorry, 
I prepared a bug out bag. It was like, I went to REI and it was like this big and it was this thick and I filled it up with everything, you know, um, and then I had a, a little Tupperware thing. Uh, I filled it up with all kinds of stuff uh, when I drove across the country because, you know, if I broke down, I, you know, I, I had a, a mat, a sleeping bag, I had a pillow, I had um, warm clothes and, um, you know, things you need, um, things women need, things people need, uh, toiletries, that's what I'm trying to say. And, um, and then I had a, a little Tupperware like this of tools, just hand tools and uh, uh, matches and um, fire starter and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And it's still in my car. And I've got a, a really good knife in there, more than one. And um, uh, let's see. And, of course, toilet paper and so forth. I also had a, a portable toilet, which now is over in the shop. But... Um, Thank you, Daisy Joe. Oh, our hand cranked. And um, Kevin, do you have a recommendation for your radio, real quick? Carol is suggesting not to cut off the power. Um, well, the only thing is, how do we how do we figure out refrigerators? And uh, you know, I need a test run because if the way that I'm going to be keeping my re re food refrigerator stuff cold is, I am going to have to have I'm going to have to use my generator. So I can't lose all this food. I've got, you know, I've, I've, I worked for months to, <laughs> to get all this, uh, you know, food. So, uh, I won't be able to practice that if I don't turn off the power. So we can discuss more on Friday. Um, I may or may not do a live on Friday. I'm going to do a video tomorrow and a video or a live on Friday. So we can do last minute preps and see where everybody's at, see who's on board, who's doing it. Um, I want at least five people to do this with me. So that's right, uh, CE. Okay. Right, Pamela. Well, Daryl, you're holding out on me. What's the name of this uh, hand crank emergency radio? Because I need that. Hmm. Right. And um, uh, the moderator, John Haffenecker, says an EMT invasion will kill everything unless it's covered by a Faraday shield. Just saying. I have a very large piece of Faraday cloth, but when I say very large, it's like not even the size of a single sheet, but it's probably almost that big. But, you know, everything is so spread out. Um, you know, laptop in there, cell phone over there, main computer over there, backup drives over there. I mean, you know, to get all that rounded up and in one place would be, and you wouldn't know when it was going to happen. You know, it's not like they're going to go, hey, everybody, we're going to send an EMT invasion now and knock everything out. So get ready. So I, you know, I don't know how to prepare for that. Um, ah, thank you. I'm so glad you said that, uh, Deanna, as, um, that's another thing we can do is freeze jugs of water and uh, and then we uh, if, if we want to try to do this on Saturday's uh, run through, it's a rehearsal. Uh, if we want to do the rehearsal without 
back uh, the uh, backup generator, then uh, we freeze jugs of water, and that way, then you can leave th those thaw out much uh, slower, and we can leave those in the freezer. And we can also uh, take one or two from the freezer and put it in the uh, upper part of the refrigerator. And who knows, maybe the power outage that we have is only going to be a day. I mean, it'd be really nice if it was only a day. Um, and if it was, that would be good enough. So anyway, we've covered a lot tonight. So thank you so much for particip part participating. And I'm so glad that so many people are so interested in this. And I'm glad that I'm finally kind of jumping in and, and uh, talking about stuff that other people have been talking about a lot, but I just, you know, you know, it just seems like other people know so much more than I do. I'm going to save this for another time because it's so late. Um, I want to give a shout out to someone special, but I'll do it another time. So thank you so much. God bless you. Have a great week. And don't forget to stay glued to my channel uh, at least through Sunday. So I'll see you in the next video. God bless. <laughs>